So welcome to Prime View, the next gen UI components session. My name is Chatai Chiriji. I'm the founder and the lead developer of Prime View. So let me start with Prime Tech. So you might be wondering who develops and who is behind Prime View. Prime Tech is um, a UI components vendor. So we have over 10 years of experience in developing UI components. Everything has started with Prime Faces, then we moved on to Angular, React, and finally we have arrived at Vue. So um, we are glad to uh, come up with um, Prime View because now we are able to share our years of experience with the Vue community as well. And our own uh, user base has been asking for uh, a Vue UI component library for Vue for quite some time. So I think they are happy for, uh, as well. So um, right now on NPM, uh, except Prime Faces, it's on on another on another uh, download system called Mail. So it has over uh, twenty million over twenty million downloads, and hopefully Prime View will join its siblings soon, considering the popularity of the siblings. Uh, and we will see, and hopefully by two thousand twenty one, we hope that uh, Prime View will be one of the most popular libraries for for View. So, are you ready for prime time? Uh, my goal is by the end of this presentation, you will be like uh, what Antonio Bandras here is feeling, and you will be thrilled, excited, and you will be thinking about the nice applications you can do with uh, Prime View. So, what's Prime View? Mainly, it is a UI component library with over 60 UI components. There are material themes, bootstrap themes, dark modes, CSS utilities called Prime Flex, and dashboards and templates and so on. So it is the complete UI solution for Prime uh, for View. So that the idea is that you don't need to include a lot of dependencies to your package JSON. So everything will be coming from the one source and one source only so that the, the migration process updating to the newer versions and compatibility with your UI components will be unified and consistent. So, well, that's the idea of using a UI component library, right? And Prime View delivers that. It is open source. Um, Prime Faces is our the name of, of our organization and it is open source on GitHub, just like its siblings. You can check all the source code out there and it's under MIT license, so it's free. Um, this is Prime View in a nutshell. We have over 60 UI components. Um, they're quite advanced. There, of course, there are simple ones and advanced ones, advanced ones like table and things like that. Um, theming is one of the highlights of Prime View. We have light themes, dark themes, material themes, bootstrap themes, and so on. Uh, let's start with the input components, starting with the you know, basic inputs, radios and check boxes. Uh, we have all various select components for list boxes, drop down, it's called usually select, uh, malt select as well, which all of these components are quite flexible. They provide a lot of uh, events and for you to hook in and uh, templating features so that you can customize the presentation. In addition to that, autocomplete calendars and uh, other components are also available, like in addition to the sliders and ratings and whatnot. Uh, input number is a late addition. It is one of the most popular uh, components for, for Prime View. So it's like a must have for enterprises, right? Where you need to deal with numbers, currencies and uh, other requirements. Buttons are, you know, they, they are, they're just buttons, but um, they come in various shapes and sizes. Mm, they can be outlined, rounded with different severities. You, they can be grouped and so on. Data table, of course, this is the most complex uh, one. Um, it supports, um, it's quite flexible with events and templating for sure, like other components. And in addition, it supports uh, sorting, paging, filtering that you may expect from a table, uh, but also goes beyond that and provides some advanced features that you are not able to find in uh, similar libraries, get like virtual scrolling, um, regular scrolling with horizontal, uh, vertical scrolling, frozen columns, frozen rows, row grouping, uh, in cell editing, row editing, column resizing, column reordering, state management, so that when you go close the browser and then come back, you can uh, find uh, the table as you left it and, and 
many other things actually. So data table is one of the most powerful components for Vue and it's, it's constantly uh, improving and evolving. In addition to the table, there are a couple of data components. One is the data view. So, you know, you, you will probably see that many times in, on the web, like e-commerce website, where the, the, the items can be listed or presented with a list view or and the grid view, then, well, basically you don't need to do worry about it. It's just built in with, with a single click on the presentation view. Uh, we use the view templates here so that you can switch between uh, different view modes. Uh, if you have a nested data, like how, if there's a hierarchy, there's a tree uh, and the tree table. Tree table is a hybrid between tree and table, uh, data table. And they also provide this uh, mighty checkbox selection, uh, which was for us a bit hard to implement. So I would like to uh, promote it here. Uh, there's a checkbox selection and the future um, uh, versions will provide even more advanced features like drag and drop between trees and uh, other extended features. Panels are used to group uh, your content. We have the accordions, tabs, uh, cards, uh, field sets and headers and toolbars. They also uh, provide built-in toggling functionality so that you, your users can toggle the content. Also, uh, their state can be uh, handled programmatically as well. Menus, um, in templates, we have our own application shell menus, like the, let's say the grant menus, but also Prime uh, View provides different kinds of menus uh, in addition to the, you know, this application shell menus. We have the context menus for uh, that has special integration with data table. <clears throat> Steps and tab menu are for, um, they're integrated with the view, view router so that they can, um, display uh, children components. Uh, of course, the menu bar and tiered menus. And the nice thing is that you using this play menu and tiered menu, you can place them in an overlay as well. It's built in, so that when you if you if you don't have a lot of space, you can just bind it to a button or a link. So that when you click on that button, the menu will pop up. So it has static mode and inline mode. Overlays, um, they're called models in other ways as well. We have the overlay panel, tooltips, uh, sidebar. Uh, I think it's also called drawer and uh, the mighty dialogue um, to display content on top of other content for sure. Messages, we have the toast, uh, which is um, a global um, service for view where you can access it using uh, anywhere in your application and then call uh, add your messages uh, using the different severities and there's in addition there's inline messages and uh, static messages as well file upload there it has two modes one is the advanced mode with the progress bar and the thumbnails and things and the other is the basic mode so if you just uh, again if you don't have a lot of space um, you just click it and it, there's an auto-upload mode as well. Then it, once you select the file, it will just upload it. Charts, uh, one of the few components of Vue that uses an external dependency, in this case, Chart.js. Um, in this case, we handle the reactivity integration with Vue so that whenever the data changes, um, the chart update themselves. Also, the interactivity is enabled so that whenever a chart, um, uh, let's say, series is clicked, we pass that information to the, uh, to the view uh, event system. And a bunch of other components like badges, progress bars, progress spinners, block UI, terminal. There's even a terminal, command line terminal. So uh, just check it out online. These are all available for you to play with online. So how to get started, assuming that you are still interested. Um, it is on NPM. Uh, we also have our own icon set called Prime Icons. So you also need that. And um, once they are installed, you, you need to include some CSS. First, the theme, because Prime is design agnostic, so you need to include the theme that you would like to use, your team, your own, you know, the Material team, Bootstrap team, or, or one of our, you know, Prime One themes like Saga. Then Prime View min.css, it's just, just a simple uh, CSS file that's a couple of lines, nothing uh, complicated. It just contains some shared variables, uh, let's say shared uh, classes between the components. And then finally, your icons. The next thing is importing, let's say, the component that you use. This is a nice thing. 
prime view consists of different components, but if you just need, let's say, dialogue and input text and table, you can just import that. You don't, your application bundle won't include all the prime view components because this is like plug and play. What you need, you can import. And then um, the next steps are, of course, configuration uh, for the dialogue component. Of course, in view three, that will be app that component. And finally, you can use it in, on your pages. And finally, and hopefully come up with these nice uh, looking UIs with Prime View. This is the highlight of Prime um, View. It's, we, we call it Prime Wine Design Architecture. Um, it's shared between its siblings like Prime Engine, Prime React as well. The idea is that it, the, these libraries are design agnostic so that they do not depend on any specific design style or system like Material Bootstrap or any other CSS library. This gives us flexibility so that we can switch themes on the fly. The core part just contains alignments like positioning for in this case, for example, drop down this I, uh, the arrow icons, you know, alignment and things like that. But the theme provides skinning colors, mm, spacing, and other similar properties. So with this approach, we are able to come up with um, different themes based on the core. So we are able to provide material theme, bootstrap theme, custom themes uh, from, our, from our design team called Prime One Themes. And also it is now able to, you know, create your own themes for your, if you have a design system, that's also possible. This is quite uh, powerful so that you can switch between different themes. Uh, otherwise, with Vue, uh, from what I see, you need to, for example, but this also happened in, in the sibling projects, the users need to switch to libraries and that means rewriting the, uh, the application, right? So if you are going to switch from material to bootstrap, you need to rewrite your application. But Prime View, that's not the case. For one client, you can come up with material team and for another client, you can use the same application and present it with a different theme. So uh, a couple of themes are bundled with Prime View. They are the bootstrap, material, um, Aria, Vela, and Saga. Aria, Vela, Saga are one of our own theme. So as you can see here, we have uh, the um, uh, material theme selected. Now selecting the bootstrap theme, the dark one. All the themes also have a couple of dark modes, not just one mode with uh, different dark shades, let's say. Now here's the tab view where, where we are able to see the um, bootstrap one. And now switching to our own Saga theme, which is like a simpler tab design and finally the material one for sure with the material animations built in and the dark material also there's the metal compact mode so, so i usually pers personally see that metal can be um can allocate a lot of space and if you need space then um in this case uh, metal compact mode will help so here there there's a nice configurator here this one there is the, where you can um, switch the input style. For example, here, there's the field inputs where their background will be displayed. Um, by the way, the components are scalable so that you can increase their sizes as well. And Ripple is built in. So let's switch to, this is the Saga. Let's switch to uh, Material uh, Prime View and switch to field mode, prime view. Switch to, let's say, dark material. And of course, you can go with material and then on the fly switch to dark bootstrap themes. And this is the same story for um, tab view as well. Here's the bootstrap tabs, uh, prime ones on tabs. Prime One's uh, dark mode, one of the dark modes. Indigo is uh, the material version. There's the compact versions as well. So there's a deep, let's say, let's check out this one. This is the dark version and so on. So let's switch back to Saga and let's see if we can find any 
uh, other compound with that character. Let's say the calendar. This is the saga version, and let's check out the material one. And this is the material version. So again, you don't need to switch the library to come up with this. You you just need one line of CSS called you know the CSS file that includes the prime view theme. In addition to the themes, we have also created a couple of templates. Uh, they are based on Vue CLI. There's a Sapphire for um, Material, Avalon for Bootstrap, Roma for from our own design team, Prestige as well. Apollo has a dark mode and Babylon. And, and there will be more coming. Uh, there can also be visited from Vue.js resources slash themes. So for example, you can also see the idea here uh, where uh, let's go to, let's say, Sapphire view. So this is the material application, material dashboard. Uh, this UI kit is actually um, the prime view components here and their material. And you can also, for example, if I change it to Avalon, which is a bootstrap version. So it's the same logic, it's the same view code, the template and the view logic is the same, but just the look and feel is different. And another one. And of course they are quite uh, flexible with different modes and color options as well. Okay. And theming story continues. We have, um, what, what happens if you like to have your own theme? In this case, we have Prime View Theme Designer. The Theme Designer has two modes. One is the visual mode, which allows you to quickly and rapidly prototype your theme and using color pickers and using a UI. And also there's the code mode and there's a nice API documentation that lists all the variables and what they are for. And the code mode is advanced for use case like uh, implementing your own uh, design system. I know users for the sibling projects have built um, uh, design systems on top of uh, prime, uh, <clears throat> prime libraries. So let's try, it is available on uh, live as well, so that you can right now go online and play with it. Designer slash view. Let's choose a base team like light version. And let's increase the border radiuses and change to primary color. Hopefully you will spend more time than I did. And highlight could be let's let's choose a different. Okay. So this is the highlight version. And you also have surfaces like headers, contents, borders, and four forms. You have a lot of variables here. So you can just go on online and um, also you can just restart and start with the dark version. And so on. Um, there's, as I mentioned, there's also the code mode where you will have full access to the SAS API. We have our own um, icon set called Prime Icons. Um, as I mentioned, it's available on NPM as well. It's, it has close to 200 icons. Our design, the, our design team has um, designed them and created them using uh, the design tools and we've converted them to the font icons. So it's our own uh, icon suite. So 
the components provide them. I mean, they utilize them, but also provide uh, properties like, uh, let's say, expanded icon, closed, collapsed icon, and things like that. So then, so that you can hook in other icon sets as well. But Prime, I think Prime icons will be more than enough for your use cases already. And you can even use it with regular HTML elements. Okay, this is one of my favorites, Prime Flex. Um, as I've told you before, Prime, the idea, the goal of Prime View is to come up with a complete UI solution. So we have a lot of open source UI components. We have um, the dashboards and templates. We have the icons and what we miss, what we were missing was the CSS utilities for layout and things like that. And we covered that with this open source project called Prime Flex. It's a CSS utility library where you will have a grid system, uh, Flexbox utilities, uh, form layout, which is an extension to the grid with uh, optimized for form layout. There is the display properties so that you can hide and, for example, on for a mobile view, you can hide a certain uh, component and for desktop environment, you can show it. Spacing utilities, that's one of my favorites. I use it a lot and on, the, on our demo pages and the elevation for, you know, shadows. So here, if you go to the Prime View uh, website, there is this nice uh, Prime Flex section. This is the grid system. It's quite dynamic. It's uh, based on 12 uh, column grid. And there's the flex box, for example, to <clears throat> mark these uh, elements like uh, flex items, you can just call PD flex. And they're all responsive uh, for certain environments. For example, the, the order can be reversed and similar. So the form layout is uh, optimized for um, forms where you can have a horizontal forms, um, vertical forms. There's a spacing utilities where you can um, space at margins and paddings for items and elevation for shadow. So you can just check it out online as well. Accessibility is one of our um, major concerns. I'm not sure, uh, not every other library is giving a lot of priority just as we did because we have a lot of customers and users in the, in the government space. And um, for 10 years, we have a really good understanding uh, of accessibility. And we have done it for, for its siblings why, and we learned how to do accessible UI components. Now, Prime View is the newest one. So we have moved that knowledge and experience to Prime View. So for our siblings, we have added accessibility afterwards to these libraries, but with Prime View, it's built in. So it is now available. And uh, our UI libraries has, have been audited many times for accessibility and they also always get some high scores and Prime View is not an exception. We spend a lot of time on keyboard support. So for menus, tables, items with selections, they all support uh, keyboards such as arrow key navigation, enter space key selection, escape key support. Semantic HTML is uh, what we prefer uh, to begin with when to help the screen readers. But if not uh, available, then we use ARIA roles and attributes. And finally, uh, we work with and we test against different screen readers to make sure that our UI components are accessible. Responsiveness is also built in. For example, even for complex uh, components like data table, they are responsive. So if you check them on a smaller screen, they just uh, align themselves. But we don't do it automatically because um, that would make uh, our components uh, restricted. We just want to make sure the media queries are customizable. So whenever we can, we provide, um, you know, um, customizable media queries using the theme so that you can choose your own breakpoints. Otherwise that would be really hard because we did that in the past and it was a bad experience for our users. They were unable to override it depending on the requirements, but now with Prime View and 
recent updates to the siblings, it is quite easy to overcome up with your own media queries so that components can get responsive. There's also the nice keyword called P fluid, so that every when every descendant inside this P fluid will make sure that it spans the 100% uh, width of its container. So it's the fluid design. Search site rendering is supported. We are we have checked with Nuxjs, and there's also a nice um, and uh, helper project called PrimeView Nuxjs Quick Start. So you can check it online as well. And while we are doing our components, we uh, SSR is um, another concern of us. So we make sure that the component is designed and programmed according to uh, SSR compatibility. TypeScript, uh, we, we come from a Java background and for, for PrimeNG we use TypeScript as well. So we have a lot of experience on TypeScript. Although PrimeView is not written in TypeScript, we ship the, the uh, type tip declaration files and we, TypeScript is a full class citizen for PrimeView. The, we also provide a sample uh, quick start application called PrimeView dash TypeScript dash quick start. Of course, if you face with any problem, you can just contact us and we can fix the if any TypeScript related issue. So how to contact us? We have our own community forum, just like other UI libraries. It's a growing community with uh, a lot of new users, new users every day, but also best of both worlds actually, we also provide enterprise services called PrimeView Pro where you can contact us um, directly using a Jira instance and we will be uh, securing, uh, you will be securing our, our response and we will be responding within one business days and you can even just um, request new features and enhancements from us. So um, this model has been working for us over the past years. So it's the like um, best of both first, open source library with the optional premium support. So uh, version three, um, we are quite excited about uh, view three because there were a couple of cases where with view two, where we thought that could be better like fragment support uh, using multiple V models and uh, some animation cases. But uh, right now we have started migration to view three and we are quite happy with what we've seen. Usually, uh, I personally, when I was doing it, I'm just removing some code that I did for Vue 2 so that we can remove some of our workarounds. Uh, so uh, it's going good so far. So by the end of uh, September and early October, we plan to release the first release candidate for uh, Vue 3. That will be Prime Vue uh, 3, but of course, uh, we will continue to support uh, Vue 2. View two, so uh, the next version will be view view three. That's what we're working on right now. Um, our release cycle sprints are biweekly, so every two weeks we do a new release. And once the view three comes out, we will keep supporting Prime View two with the long-term support. And we have some ideas like better virtual scrolling, um, advanced data filtering, where you you will have much more control over the filtering. Three and three table enhancements include uh, scrolling and drag and drop. Dynamic dialog will allow you to embed uh, any component inside. So, so there will be a dynamic loading. And there will be new themes and new templates. So you're, you don't be surprised if you see uh, the mimic of your, fav uh, of your favorite CSS library uh, implemented as a theme uh, in prime view, just like bootstrap. For example, the bootstrap theme doesn't use bootstrap, so it just mimics it. And there will be more templates. We have some new uh, templates for the, for the sibling projects and we will port them to prime view as well. So uh, thank you. Hopefully you have enjoyed this presentation and hopefully I managed to impress you, impress you guys. And by the end of this presentation, um, I hope that you have some ideas about what to do with uh, and some cool project ideas with, uh, that you can implement with PrimeView. So thank you uh, for joining me on the session and um, always bet on Prime. Thank you. <laughs>